Watch a decades-old tradition return to a classic beachside community when the Santa Monica Pier hosts an afternoon of paddleboard racing. And witness the Natural History Museum's newest exhibit, which focuses on the diversity of life throughout Earth history as we explore the age of mammals on this edition of Out and About. And this is one, probably one of the most popular growing sports in America right now, supping, stand-up paddleboarding. They're doing it in, uh, in the mud bogs of Oklahoma and in the Mississippi River and across the nation on any body of water you can do this. Uh, the rule uh, says that we have to stay up the whole way and uh, that makes, uh, makes it uh, different from uh, regular paddleboarding in the sense that we have to keep our balance, our stay on our feet, so in today's conditions with the side wind, it made it a little more challenging for us, but uh, made it fun too. Somehow or another, you're bringing back something that was a part of history here. Paddleboarding as a sport really uh, faded away in the early 1960s, but during the 1940s and 1950s was a, a real heyday for, for paddleboarding at the pier. There were, there were races all the time. The local paper published race results weekly just a very high-spirited and, and, and fun-loving group of people who like to get out and paddle and race. A once popular seaside sporting tradition makes a grand return to the shores of Southern California as the Santa Monica Pier welcomes home the sport of paddleboard racing, featuring an afternoon of exciting competition splashed with a dose of nostalgia. The Santa Monica Pier, you know, has always had a relationship with the ocean, but probably the most intimate relationship, any, the, the group that was most intimate in the relationship with the ocean was the paddleboarders, because of course they're, they're closest. And the Santa Monica Pier at one time had two active paddleboard clubs that called the pier home. One was the Manoa Paddleboard Club, which was an all-women's group, and one was the Santa Monica Paddleboard Club, and it was a co-ed group. Sounds like it was, uh, like, like if you did that or you, you, you were a fan of that group, then uh, you were in. That's true, that's true. And some of the, the um, women who were in the Manoa Paddleboard Group crossed over and actually were in both of the paddleboard groups. And uh, one of the things that I liked to, uh, that, that was fun for me to discover in reading about the old paddleboard groups was um, the Santa Monica Paddleboard Group had a mascot that was a duck that they just kind of adopted. A, a duck that would hang out on the beach and it would hang out with the paddleboarders, so he became their mascot. So like I said, a very fun-loving group. If the sight of paddle boards lined up along the beach wasn't historic enough, imagine the sight of lifeguards navigating the heavy surf with classic rescue craft known as dory boats. Well, today's a special event uh, held here at the Santa Monica Pier, and it's a special event because it's uh, a race that hasn't taken place in about 60 years. So uh, being one of the main sponsors, us at Honolulu really wanted to bring back a tradition here at the Santa Monica Pier of uh, waterman lifestyle and waterman craft. And what we're seeing here is a paddleboard race and dory board races, or dory boat races, I should say. And um, there was two different races taking place. There was a five and a half mile paddle race, as well as a three lap dory race. And dories are uh, a short, life-saving boat that were used back in the uh, early 1900s, um, actually into the, probably the 20s. Lifeguards would use these boats to make rescues and save, 
you know, pedestrians that were in the wall. I was going to ask you about, uh, well, like, what is a dory? Because this is my first experience with that word, except for my sister-in-law has that name. Uh, uh, why are they different from other boats? Um, they're two-man boats, and they're short in nature, but they're stocky and wide. And what that does is allow the boats to punch through the surf really quickly. And um, the two gentlemen or women that are in the boat will row against the surf to get out, like if they were going to do rescues. And nowadays, you more see it as an active lifestyle or a waterman lifestyle, something to represent a tradition and something for sport and athleticism. In this particular competition, the two men teams embark on what is essentially a relay race. It's an exhaustive experience requiring strength, durability, and stamina to maneuver the heavy boats through the relentless and pounding surf. Andrew, uh, I understand that uh, you went way out there and came back again. Is this like a relay race or what? Um, it's more like a tag team, you know. Uh, the bowman stays with the with the boat while I get out of the boat, run to the uh, line where we're supposed to start and finish, and then run back to the boat. So actually it takes uh, two guys to do this? Yep, two guys. Two-man team. It's a team effort. Uh, this is uh, something that's new to me, but uh, this is not a rowboat we're looking at, is it? <laughs> yeah, it's a, it's actually a, a, a surf boat. We call them you know, on the West Coast dories, uh -huh. and uh, they have a false bottom. Therefore, we can have holes so that when the water comes in, the, when this wave comes in, it will just drain out. But there's a false bottom, so it doesn't fill up with water because the holes, the, the water drains out of the holes. I guess you've done this before. Yeah, yeah, this is my uh, fourth year doing it, so. So today is a day uh, to have fun doing it. Oh yeah, it's so much fun, yeah. Like, uh, I'm, I'm a surfer, I usually surf, and when it's small and you can't really surf it, it's so fun to take the dory out and just ride waves and row around when there's no surf. If heavy surf hampers the dory boat's maneuverability, its effect is quite the opposite for this next competition. At the sound of the starting alarm, dozens of paddleboard racers hit the heavy surf with a passion, knowing that it would make the race faster and infinitely more exciting. The race lasts more than an hour and claims two winners, one for each style of paddle boarding. There's traditional paddle boarding, which you lay down on your stomach and or your knees. And then there's stand-up paddling, where you paddle with an oar as well. So I won the traditional paddling, but I was also first across the line. So uh, you weren't happy with just one, you got both. <laughs> yes, yes. It's always a, a good race between the stand-up paddlers and the traditional paddlers. Um, but with the, with the wind, it makes it a little choppy, which is a little bit harder for the guys standing up. Uh, what about today's experience when you uh, launched out there? Uh, what was that like and what were you expecting? Um, well, it was the first race um, here at Santa Monica, and I was very pleased to be a part of it. And I was expecting exactly what's here. We have a great turnout. There was fans um, you know, on the pier cheering, and as I came back across on my second lap, I could hear people and see people on the pier, and just what a great place for a race. Uh, I saw a lot of uh, waves out there. Were you concerned about that, or did you want them? or how, how, How'd you feel about that part of it? Um, as paddlers, we're, we're mostly surfers to begin with, so the waves, we love them. Um, and especially during a race, it adds to um, the challenge of it. If it's flat water, you're just paddling through flat water. When there's a little bit of chop, it makes it a little bit more difficult to kind of read the ocean. Crossing the finish line as the first place winner of the stand-up paddle boarding competition is a surfer from West Africa who now hails from Marina del Rey. Are, are you uh, uh, normally a person who surfs or is this uh, your specialty or what? Yes, yes, I spend a lot of time on the water. I surf, I stand up paddle surf, and uh, I paddle, stand up paddle, pretty much on a daily basis. Spend a lot of time on the water. And uh, living in the marina helps too. Cause uh, w where else have you uh, uh, been able to uh, indulge in your favorite hobby? <laughs> oh, a lot of places. I mean, all up and down the California coast. We get races, you know, several times a month. And uh, I've done it too in, uh, in France, in in Senegal, West Africa, where 
my dad is from and where I, I grew up before I came here. So I've done it in different places. So for you, this is nonstop, isn't it? Uh, pretty much, yeah, it's part of my life <laughs> to be on the water. I enjoy myself a lot, you know, other people go to the gym and I'd rather be on the water as much as I can. But uh, on the other hand, it's, it's really a people sport too because you must meet a lot of people if you're traveling around the world doing this. Oh, definitely, and especially at races, you meet a lot of people, you know, indulge in the same uh, thing and uh, it's, it's pretty fun every time. It's, you know, it's racing, it's tough, it's competition, but at the same time, you know, it's a big gathering and uh, it's a lot of fun. After the competitive races are over, the event concludes with a paddleboard race open to everyone. The dozens of surfers who sat on the sidelines all morning eagerly enter the water to enjoy their own exhilarating dip into the Pacific surf, which is so carefully monitored by Heal the Bay, the main benefactor of the paddleboarding event. Well, we're dedicated to uh, making Southern California's coastal waters and watersheds safe, healthy, and clean. So we do that through a combination of efforts. One way is through research and science. So we publish something called the beach report card. So before you go swimming or surfing or paddling, um, you can check the grade at that beach to find out what the water quality is like. Uh, the other thing we do is a lot of education work. So K through 12, um, the public, we're teaching everyone how they can personally make a difference in terms of how to keep the ocean safe and clean. And we also work a lot through volunteerism, so a lot of community action. We want people to participate in the process of cleaning up their beaches. So we hold something called Nothing But Sand every third Saturday of the month where the public can just come out, get a beach talk, learn about where the pollution comes from, and help to clean it up. And then lastly, we do a bit of advocacy, which is work at the local, uh, state level, uh, through legislation to try to affect change in our laws and regulations so we can reduce the amount of trash that actually ends up in our oceans. Fortunately, Heal the Bay's efforts have done much to increase public awareness about the need for healthy beaches. And healthy beaches bring tourists to the many coastal communities which rely upon their business. With any luck, this allure may inspire today's youth to discover paddle boarding as a new and exciting experience. How do you feel about the resurgence of paddle boarding? Well, I think it's wonderful. You know, it's, it's really, it's extraordinary to bring back history, to revisit history and make it vital again. Uh, us at Honolulu really support the watermen and all things water. Um, as long as we're a part of the surf community, we want to be a part of the paddle community as well. And that includes paddle races, open water paddling, and just paddling for enjoyment with your family and friends as well. It sounds to me as though this is uh, making more complete, uh, if, if you want, uh, of the image of uh, the Santa Monica Pier and Santa Monica itself. It is, you know, and this is something that we're really excited to partner with, with the Los Angeles uh, County lifeguards, and this is really just a lifeguard tradition and a waterman tradition, so we're very pleased to be a part of it. Okay, here's the, uh, the big question. Are you a paddle boarder? I am a paddle boarder. I love the lifestyle, the experience of being out in the open ocean by yourself, and you know, you get a very unique perspective of what the land looks like when you're in the water by yourself on a board, just kind of out there doing your thing, so. Nothing like it, huh? Nothing like it. When we return, we'll take a trip back through time when climatic changes ushered in a whole new era in species evolution. Stay with us as we experience the age of mammals at the Natural History Museum of LA County when Out and About continues.